Welcome into the Film Guy Network. It's football season, which means I've got a film study for you. is up ladies and gentlemen welcome in to the film guy network on a fabulous monday tuesday wednesday however whenever you found this we appreciate you for being here if you're new to the program my name is brooks austin uh the director of recruiting for sports illustrated also played a little bit of college football myself also the lead host and uh you know kind of director if you will of the film guy network we do live shows monday through thursday eight o'clock to ten o'clock the standard talk show college football that most people do what makes us a little bit different and always has i like to get up on the board we like to do around here what we call shut up and grind the tape we look at the film and, and pay attention to it we always try to look at the biggest game for the week in, in college football last week it was uh, uh tennessee oklahoma we did a massive film study on that thank you oklahoma tennessee fans for showing up this week no secrets about it. Georgia on the road in Tuscaloosa at Alabama. Massive, massive football game, two versus four. A tremendous opportunity for both of those football programs to kind of get off uh, the 2024 season in terms of uh, massive, massive opponents moving forward. Obviously, going into this film study about Alabama's defense, I've got several questions. First and foremost, how much have they changed? Over the years under Nick Saban, they've kind of been a relatively carbon copy, both Alabama and Georgia defensively schematically fundamentally they do the same things interested to see how much have they changed under Kane or Kane Womack the body types defensively particularly with the defensive line I'm going to show you this they're very predictable doesn't mean they're hard to they're they're easy to stop or anything like that but in terms of what the physical body types are that will indicate what that individual is being asked to do from this defensive staff linebacker core legit as it gets in college football super excited to show you these guys 11-0 and 15 are as good as it gets in college football at that inside linebacker position the project the prediction on tape they will not miss tackles we will not see them miss a tackle today at that inside linebacker position safeties and nickels in my opinion are really really elite obviously transfer in Keon Saab from uh, Michigan uh, Devontae Smith in there playing the nickel slash hybrid safety as well and of course Malachi Moore the veteran uh, comes back in this defensive backfield as well I do think so far throughout the season their complexity will get them beat they are very very much so a more complex defense than they have been in years past a lot of mixed coverages a lot of disguised looks and it will get them it, it, it will create some busted coverages as an offense you've got to be able to capitalize on those and my last probably most important but won't harp on it too much note here wisconsin offense pretty bad all right here we go uh we got to stand right here like i said shut up and grind the tape this is the second time we've recorded this that's some mic issues on the first one so hopefully we nail this let's do it i'm excited about this super excited about this man obviously told you first and foremost as that screen is nice and blurry let's go ahead and get into three um I, I told you to start hey how much have they changed and here we go right off rip they've been a four two five nickel football team for years now one two three four five we're still in nickel personnel right we still got five defensive backs on the field all right but how do you want to classify what they're playing physically because i've got three really big bodies this is a 285 pound plus guy this is a 320 plus guy this is a 280 pound plus guy and then we got Quay Rousseau who's in the middle of this defense kind of lingering or what I call lurking playing the lurk position right he's in here lurking at about six two and a quarter all right six two and a quarter I'd say about 245 is Quay Rousseau now Georgia fans you should be really really comfortable with this uh, Georgia offensive line, you should be really, really comfortable with this. This is Jalen Walker running around. Now, they're doing it a little bit differently. I would say he's a little bit better of a straight line rusher than Jalen, but doesn't have the bend and doesn't have the hands and doesn't have the off-ball linebacker ability quite yet. So there's some fundamentals uh, difference between the two. But from a physical standpoint, they're almost identical. So here we see this kind of, do you want to call it a 4-2-5? Do you want to call it a 3-3-5? It doesn't really matter. All you need to know is that, hey, Four's standing up, four's lurking, four's gonna be a problem if we allow him to be one. 
Ford's going to be a problem if we allow him to be one. All right, so they would kind of see the structure of the defense. Now, the other thing I will show you. Now, I told you, complexity will both get you beat and get them beat if you're not careful. I've told you guys for years, alignment and eyes and safety alignment will kind of indicate what coverage they're ultimately playing. If I were walking to the line of scrimmage and I just looked at alignment, I didn't look at eyes. If I just looked at alignment, I would think they were in some type of cover one. All right, everybody's lined up directly over everyone. All right, and we got a safety in the middle of the field. That would indicate to me some type of man coverage. Now, the only thing, if I were Carson Beck or if I were Tyler Van Dyke, I'd be paying attention to is what? Jonathan, do you see anything? What do you see? I see a whole lot of eyes on the quarterback. Though your alignment's telling me man coverage, your eyes put us in two. Make sure we get nice and close in here. Your eyes are lying to me. Your eyes are on the quarterback. 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 And obviously, your eyes are on the quarterback. So your alignment's telling me you're in man. But if you're in man coverage, you'd be looking right at that guy in front of you because you got to cover him. You might be looking or, or standing right there, but if you're looking at me, I know you're doing this as soon as the ball snapped, right? I know you're dropping as soon as the ball snapped. So watch what happens as the ball is snapped. Boom. We plug the corner. Okay, we fire the corner. We're going to play outside, inside, inside, outside, deep half, deep half. We're going to rotate to Tampa 2 after showing cover one to start the football game out of a three high shell or out of a three down front. All right. And by the way, we're giving a free hat right here. He's just going to spy. Russian three, plug in the corn. All right. So again, this ain't your basic, hey, we're Alabama football. We're going to line up and play defense. No, dude, they're, they're going to send a lot of different stuff. That's the very first play of the football game. We'll talk body types here in just a second. All right, complexity for them, okay? Compl complex for them too is what the note says, all right? They're going to get a motion here, all right? Both eyes right here, both eyes right here are on the same guy, and I believe they slip, all right, right in behind, okay? Yep, they slip right in behind. So their complexity can get them beat as well. Two guys doing the same thing, all right? And if you really want to take it a, a, another step, 13 falls down right here, and the tight end's running the grass. If you really, really, really want to look at it, okay? Now, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this right now. Wisconsin's tight end, loaf. Absolute loaf. Just a jogger, in my opinion. Either he's really, really slow, or he's a jogger on tape. Either way, pretty non-playable. Pretty non-playable uh, in this conference. I saw 11 and 13 being on different pages in this football game way too often, uh, in my opinion. Now, some of this stuff that Wisconsin's doing, right, some of these late motions, some of this stuff to attempt to create havoc, I think you can do this shit at home. You can't do this on the road, all right? So a lot of this stuff may not be applicable, all right? A lot of this stuff may not be applicable. We can, we can empty motion like that on the road. That's not that's nothing. But this idea that we're going to be able to walk to the line of scrimmage, line up in one and go, hey, scatter! And then everybody move to a new location and then get set. And then we're going to bring motion. like that. That's a lot going on for a road game. So we got to be able to kind of pay attention to the non-verbal cues and, and the non-motioning cues to make sure we can identify what type of coverage they're ultimately in. All right, so here we go. Now they're in cover one. All right, so here's the difference. His eyes locked. He's in off-man coverage. His eyes locked. His eyes locked. We all see that, right? There's a, a, a subtle, a subtleties now because they lined up in this same exact look, and everybody else was looking at us as a quarterback. Now everybody's looking at their guy. They're probably running some type of cover one. So here's what I would be paying attention to, Jonathan. I would be making sure that we have systems and plays called in place to beat both man and zone. Okay, because they, they, we're a check with me offense in college football, right? We walk up to the line of scrimmage, we do one of those, and then we stand up, we look at coach, say, coach, what you want? Well, as soon as we do that and we see a cover one look, we still have to be able to beat zone with whatever we're calling because they might be disguising coverage, right? That's all, all we're trying to show right here. 
All they're doing is playing a multitude of coverage while showing both at times. All right, so now they're going to lock up, play cover one. And other than that, I don't have an eval point for you here, except for I told you they would inevitably bump back into a standard 4-2-5 nickel. All right, now, now Rousseau is standing up on the edge, and he's not just rovering. Now he's playing a traditional jack position, okay? You're playing the defensive end, right? You're the nose tackle, right? You're the, the, uh, the defensive tackle, the three tech. That's a standard, you know, if you will, Georgia fans, that's a standard Georgia defensive front right there, okay? Now, let's talk about body types on the interior of this defensive line as the pass plays begin. All right, so I can't quite tell the number, but I'm going to tell you, defensive ends, these guys are always 250 to 265 in this system. Think um, my penmanship, horrendous. Think uh, Michael Williams type of body type. Okay, this is Tim Keenan, the nose tackle. He is very special in his own right. Fire hydrant. This is a fire hydrant. This dude's five foot eleven. Just kidding. He's about six one. He's got to be three twenty, and he's got to carry two seventy of that in his hips and ass. I mean, this dude is a plug, and he's gonna play like that too. So when you face ninety six. Bring your anchor. All right, bring your anchor. He is an absolute plugger. Every single defensive tackle, Jonathan, that they've rot rotated in got arm length like yours. They got real, real, real long arms, and they strike and fight with their hands really, really well. And if you see anybody in this spot doing this, buddy, get your ass ready. They got twitch. They immediately got twitch. They got NFL twitch and bend on this roster, so pay attention. Okay? Okay. I am worried if I'm Georgia right now after watching two days of this tape, three days, four days, however many times I've turned on Alabama tape this year, I'd be worried about speed rushes at tackle. It's been something you've been susceptible to all year long uh, against lesser than competition. Uh, you better be ready. I don't have any analysis for the quarterback keeping the ball here. I'm not going to put it in my game plan all of a sudden. I'm not, I'm not winning off quarterback keeps in this football game if I'm Georgia. We all know that. All right, so no need for further analysis right here on, hey, do we put this in the playbook? No, you don't. All right, right back into cover one. Right back into cover one. This is Bama football, man. Get in your face. We're covering your shit. No way. No way, right? They still play aggressive brand styles of football, okay, with a little bit more complexity than I've seen in years past. But here's what I'm talking about with these body types, okay? Watch this big joker right here. Understand something, dog. He ain't got no bones about it. He is bull rushing you. There ain't, there ain't no secrets. You see 96, get your anchor ready, put your cleats in the ground, roll your hips. You see this guy? Understand, you're you going to get some type of move. You're going to get the hands. You're going you to get something because he's got really long arms. Look, boom. You see him reaching out, extending out? All right, let's take a look at these edge rushers. This is going to be a little combination of speed to power. He's an athlete but he's also really, really strong. So I might see an upfield pressure right here, boom, with back into the bull rush, all right? Over here, I can almost guarantee you every single time he's trying to work a ghost first. That's the first plan. We are going to speed, and then we are going back to power if we have to. But that's it. We're going speed first. So watch out over there at number four. Boom, there's that outside speed rush trying to get that hand swiped down. All right. Now, Malachi Moore has played a lot of football. A lot of football. I want y'all to watch him. Okay. Now, I believe there is some type of cover one, but we're going to get a real clear picture a a as things develop. Right now, it looks to me like this safety's got this tight end. This safety's got this tight end. Everybody else is manned up. And now Malachi thinks he's going to, hey, maybe add into the box, be a free hat right here against the run. Pay attention. Watch. So he's going to fake a blitz right here, okay? And then they shuffle. They, 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 they scatter out to a new formation. And now he's pointing. He's pointing down. What do you think he's pointing down for, Jonathan? He thinks the play's going back. Yeah, he thinks he's getting a screen pass. Why? I don't know. Why? I don't know. But guess what he's going to do? He's going to relay it to Jihad Campbell. And now Jihad Campbell's got his hands up. And now we're playing with indications of where we think things are about to go. And now the ball's going to get snapped. And oh shit, here comes the swing screen, and guess who's about to blow it up? 
13 is about to blow it up because 13 and 11 both knew what was coming. Again, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff about the, the Stallion stuff over the years. Jonathan, when I see this on tape, I want to I wanna reward 13 for doing this. Because Michigan players for years got to do this and look to the sideline and Stallions was doing this or doing this and the whole team knew what to do. But this is one player. This is one player studying his ass off on tape, studying his ever-loving butt off on tape, seeing it happen on Saturday and making the play because he earned it, right? So I, I, I'm all for this stuff right here. I'm all for, damn. That's not only a really, really good physical football player, that's a smart football player. That's a guy that's played a lot of football and watched a lot of tape. You can see Campbell react and bounce to this as well as you see more kind of creeping into your screen right there, okay? Now Campbell's going to relay it. Now we're licked, right? Now, now we got it rolled. All right. Again, a lot of football. A lot of football. Okay, y'all been y'all been a three by one spread out team for the whole first possession and a half right here, right? So now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden my my spacing's kind of kind of bumped up right here on third and medium, third and long. So if I'm Malachi Moore right here, I'm probably think I'm getting uh, uh, someone's trying to mesh me. I'm probably getting picked of some sort, right? I got this guy. I'm responsible for him. All right, if I am, I've got to really be careful for anything like that. All right, so let's watch Malachi. Okay, let's watch Malachi. Let's watch how he clears all this stuff, lets it all clear, and then drives back down on this speed out route that they're trying to occupy right here from Michigan. Wisconsin, sorry. Okay, there's all the junk. There's all the junk. Here we go. All right, so I got to get to this route somehow as a defensive back. Let's let everything clear, and then let's drive. Let's let everything clear, and then let's drive on the ball. Ball's inside. Ball's probably late. Also think the wide receiver, and we're going to see a lot of this moving forward. What, what is up with all this space? Right? Way too much obvious, clear declaration of where everyone's going way too early in the snap. We're not even to the top of our drop yet. And we've already created the, the space for the defense. Now, look. Ooh, that's nice and easy. All right, I can get out here if I want to, right? Ooh, I get to float back here. That's nice and easy. All right, making it way too easy for, uh, for this defense from Alabama. I think the problem, Jonathan, is we've got to be all the way up here. We, we can't be – watch how slow to release this uh, number three receiver is. He does this kind of hop step off the line of scrimmage. And now we're just now to the line of scrimmage. Everybody else is four yards out. We need to be with them. Once we let the tight end clear, we got to go. And again, the ball's inside. I will say this. Um, it makes me really, really happy. He's not on the field right now, I don't think. But it makes me really, really happy as an evaluator to see LT Overton have – he is on the field. He's right there at number 22 getting that rush. Having worked out, you know, I – Super, super great athlete, freshman, sophomore, junior year. Then reclasses and going to Texas A&M, man, I was, I was worried about it on tape at Texas A&M. It just didn't look great uh, for an extended period of time. It looks like an NFL football player now. So that, that's, that's good news for him. Obviously, good news, good news for his family. That's a guy that's going to make millions. Uh, let's go back to three right here. Hey, guys. I know it's Wisconsin. I know Wisconsin throws the football a lot. I know. I, I understand this. But if they're going to do this, if they're going to rush three, we have got to be willing to hold on to the football. We've got to be willing to hold on to the football, extend plays, right, move up within the pocket, allow our quarterback to continue to – or allow our offensive line to continue to work, allow our wide receivers to continue to run to grass. What we cannot do when teams rush three is check the football down within three seconds. We just it, – it just – we can't have it. All right, we are conceding. We're doing what they want us to do. Checking the ball down when they're dropping eight is the defense's dream. They got eight guys running the ball now. All right, with three more pursuing from the backside, it's their dream. You have to be willing to hold the football, all right, and allow plays to continue to develop. All right, allow guys to run to grass. Uh, let's go to 346. I just want to show you this clip. 
because I want you to know that they hunt the ever-loving piss out of the football. All right, they're no different than you guys if you're a Georgia fan watching this. They hunt the ball. And this is, this is important to teach in the film study when you're playing Alabama because Tyler Van Dyke clearly did not get the message. Guys, they hunt the ball. Don't be lackadaisical on the sideline. Don't, don't be willy-nilly thinking you're free because you're not. They're hunting the rock until the echo of the whistle. So pay attention. Get your ass out of bounds. You know who my first note is right here? My first note is a young football player who's had a lot of opportunity so far through the season and has a propensity to cut the ball back. Tre or, uh, Nate Frazier. Nate Frazier, understand that they've been – Kirby Smart has been harping on you all season about not cutting the ball against the grain, about not cutting back, about staying positive, about getting forward – because of teams like this. They don't just pursue the ball relentlessly. They got freaks doing so. Okay, so I, I'm just envisioning right now, number three, trying to do one of those and getting absolutely obliterated by number 19. They hunt the rock. Pay attention. That's the whole point of this. Uh, this changed the game. This changed the game for Wisconsin because this guy doesn't understand, oh, oh, they fast. They fast and they angry when they get to the ball. All right, they hunt the rock. Pay attention. Get your ass out of bounds, dude. Played way too much football not to know that. 406. All right, this is a, a note about number four. See what I mean by the speed rush down here on the bottom? Pay attention to this, Xavier Truss. Pay attention to this, Monroe Freeling. Pay attention to this, uh, you know, Ernest Green. Your, your, your top side shoulder is going to get pressed in this football game. You're going to get speed rushed in this football game. There is no doubt about it. This is the first throw from the backup, and honestly, I don't hate the conceptual design here uh, from the uh, defense or from the offensive coordinator. I do think we get a PI here at the top of the screen. I think that's PI. That's past five yards. All right. Um, and we're trying to work a dig here. With the deep go, the deep go right here, straight to the middle of the pylons, or straight in the middle of the uh, goalpost, is supposed to occupy this center field safety. So this dig route right here should be running, okay, against leverage. We got a corner on our backside. We're going to break on the inside, right? We should be running away from leverage right here. I actually like the beater. I think the beater's there. Woo, we got grass, right? Uh, we got a first-time quarterback in here that throws a duck fart and puts this ball on the ground. Again, Wisconsin, not great. Not great. I do think you got away with the P.I. right here. Also think that's a very savvy play by Devontae Smith right there. That DB, oh, he ran into me. Oh, you know, one of those. But clearly, you bumped into him. Go to 446. Where are we at time-wise there, Jay? 23. All right. So, I don't like to uh, – I don't like to draw up plays too much because I'm not an offensive coordinator. I'm not. But we've shown you they've played a lot of cover one. All right, and now they're dropping eight. All right. They're dropping eight, and guess what? Man, probably some type of man. Maybe not. We got one, two, three, hats free. Might be cover three, honestly, Jonathan. He looks like he's bailing. He looks like he's bailing. Nonetheless, Three guys rushing, eight guys dropping. I have seen – Wisconsin is trying to run a screen here, but I'm going to tell you, running screens with three big defensive linemen that are slanting, twisting, stunting, really, really hard to do. Really, really hard to do to try to sneak a little running back up in the middle of all that mess, pitch him a ball, and expect him to get loose. So here's what I've seen teams do, honestly, Jonathan. I, I think KC is the first one I saw do it. Take a three-step drop, extend, extend, extend angle screen all right we're gonna run the running back on a little angle route okay this tight this linebacker is ultimately going to be responsible for him he's gonna widen out as we go here all right and as we stick back in we're gonna slip the center and go pick up the mic all right watch how this would ultimately clear out if that's what we were doing okay if that's what we were doing and this ball was coming in right here as opposed to trying to pitch in right here if we were able to throw this over this defensive line we got one for him. We got one for him. Running back one-on-one -on -one with you. All right? I don't expect them to run it. I would put it in the book. I, first of all, I, on Monday, after watching this clip, on Monday I'd go out to practice. I'd put the defense in a 4-2-5, and I'd 
and I wouldn't tell them jack shit. I would say you're playing cover one, and that's it. Hey, three-man rush, cover one. You three, y'all got free eyes on the quarterback, all right? You three. You, you, and you. Y'all got eyes on the quarterback, all right? That's what they're playing. And then I'd line up, and I'd run it. And I'd just see how it operates after we walked it through in pre-practice, just to let everybody know what jobs are and responsibilities are. And then I'd get the picture on tape. And if it looked clean the first time I ran it, it'd be in the book. If it looked like it had an opportunity to be clean, it'd be in the book. If it looked like dog shit and Carson looked at me and said, ain't no way I'm completing that ball, it'd be cooked. We all got it. All right, there we go. That's how offensive design would work in my building. I don't know how offensive design works in other buildings. You almost got, some, some coaches are hesitant, though, to try things because if they fail, they think lack of confidence maybe, you know. <clears throat> Notes right here say, why is the receiver not breaking on the ball? All right, so they're not too, too complex here, Jonathan. They're showing zone. And we've seen out of zone, what do they like to play? They're, I think they're going to, it looks to me like they're locking that. But out of zone, it looks like to me they try to play a version of Tampa. Okay, they're going to squat that corner. They're going to squat this corner. This safety's going to have the middle of the field. This safety's going to have this corner of the field. They're playing some type of too high shell when they ultimately play uh, cover two, right? That's what they're showing. All right, we got this safety in the middle of the field. We got this safety in the middle of the field. We got everybody else kind of playing up underneath with the eyes on Q. Okay, they're all on relatively same levels. Um, here's, here's, here's where a lot of teams try to attack this. They try to bring number three vertically and make that linebacker run with him. All right, Wisconsin's actually going to hit the flag and bring number two on the bender. All right, now watch Jihad Campbell. Watch Jihad Campbell at the top of your screen, number 11. So first, as we go to drop, like I told you, the, the Ohio State touchdown play, uh, uh, Alabama against Ohio State several years ago, Devontae Smith goes streaking down the middle of the field, and old Tommy Eichenberg's like, oh, shit, and he's trying to run him down, and, and announcers are like, what in the world are they doing? Why are they making a linebacker run with the number three receiver? Well, they got caught into a Tampa look where if you're in three by one in Tampa and this guy goes vertical down the seam shot, the linebacker does indeed have to turn and run with him. So here's what they're going to do. They're going to flash that and then run it away and then bring number two onto the same route. Watch Jihad Campbell. Watch Jihad Campbell run with the number three to, uh, wide receiver. Watch him break out. Pick up the number three, uh, number two wide receiver and run with him. All right, boom. There goes the breakout. Now his eyes are immediately locked on the inward breaking route and watch him close that ground. Guys, that's a six foot three, almost six foot four, 245 pounder out there doing it like that. And of course, giving up a sack as well, I believe. Oh no, this is, this is where you, yeah. Wisconsin's bad, folks. Wisconsin's bad. All right, we're, we got an in-breaking route here. Now, for some reason, wide receiver thinks I'm, I'm running a curl. <sighs> he should be running a cross. All right, because the, the wide receiver, the, the DB here, Keon Saab, responds like a football player. The wide receiver does not. The wide receiver does not. Buddy, keep running. Keep running. At, at best case, run back to the football. What you don't need to do is stop where you're at. What you don't need to do is stop where you're at because Alabama's DBs are not. Alabama's DBs are going to run through the catch point. Damn near picked this ball off. I think we're getting away with a hold at left tackle as well. All right. Now, sometimes I get on here and I tell Georgia what you should do. Sometimes I get on here... And I'm like, ooh, this is what I would do. This is what I would do. You ready? Here we go. You would be zero. You would be 11. Or whoever, you know, if Lawson's your better blitzer, that's fine. Whoever your best blitzer is would be right here. This would be my best blitzer. And with this three by one set, right, I know for a fact, nine times out of 10, this is how the pass protection is going to go. All right, we're going to call some type of lucky as an offensive line. Meaning we got a four-man slide to the left. 
all right, you're going to be one-on-one -on -one with this guy, all right, which means what? That means the running back is going to be one-on-one -on -one with the Mike linebacker, all right? Now, if I'm Alabama, I'm telling you what I'm doing right now because watch as this play, as this ball is snapped, watch how clear this picture becomes. We're going to find out if Trevor Etienne is either going to pass protect today or if he's going to be a, a weapon against us in, pass, or in the pass. But nothing on tape, if I'm Alabama, nothing on tape has shown me that they're willing to, to release the running back out. Um, so that means he's always in protection, which means I'm going to hunt him. I'm going to absolutely hunt him. All right, because I might not be able to beat these five guys consistently. I might not. But I might be able to beat that guy. All right, I might be able to beat that guy. Whether it's Trevor, whether it's uh, Branson, whether it's uh, Cash Jones, Whoever it is, I'm going to force that running back to stick, stick his nose in the hole right there in B-gap and meet me at the line of scrimmage with a one-on-one. -on -one. You see how clear that oh, and, and, and void that spot is. You've got all that grass to work a one-on-one. -on -one. There's your one-on-one -on -one right there if you're Alabama. And again, when we get in this, you know, shade three, nine, whatever you want to call this, shade four I nine when we get into this real wide setting with a nine out here we are dictating the slide we're gonna dictate the slide every single time because oh by the way as an offensive line we're calling Mike 11 we're calling Mike 11 which means zero is left for the back all right so we have to four man slide this way where are we at good all right, at this point, Wisconsin said, screw it. We'll try to get to the edge today, <clears throat> which I think is a, 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 a doable thing. All right, a very doable thing. If they want to play man coverage out here, which I got a lot of eyes on me right now, so I think they're going to roll to some zone. But if they're going to line up like man, all right, if we can keep everything in this box and then run outside of it, we might have an opportunity, right? We might have an opportunity, which is what they're ultimately trying right here. I think they were going to roll to some type of cover three right there. Don't you? It's a, it's a tough ass assignment, dude. I would I'm trying to think what I would do is build in automatic scatters or automatic motions. All right. So if I say, we're going to line up in Trey Wright, all right, which is the tight end on the right, the X on the backside by himself. The tight end's attached. We have uh, a slot receiver and a wide receiver uh, Z out on the end. Well, maybe Trey Wright automatically starts out as duo right, all right, and then the slot receiver motions over into his trips position. Does that make sense? That way we at least get some type of – Hey, here's the indicator without having to do motion at the snap. We can just have it built in to the formation. But again, you're, you're asking football players to be really, really smart on the road in those types of environments. God forbid I recruit smart football people, right? Pin and pull would be in the uh, game plan, guys. I would want to get these guys vertically because of this right here. Look at 10. 10 right here in the middle. He's been hunting, getting up field, playing uh, physical against standard inside zone the whole day. And then we scoop him right quick. And look how quickly he is turned sideways. You know what I mean? We chip that guy's inside uh, pectoral, and he's, he's tilted already. Okay? So, and, and this guy's playing way too far uphill right now. He's getting his momentum used against him. So, they clearly were not expecting this right here. Uh, third, fourth drive right here from uh, Wisconsin. Go to 632. Number 11 is a very, 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 very special football player. First and foremost, five-year guy, been starting for a first, I think it's his first year starting. I think he was a spot player last year for these guys. All right. First year, been here half a decade. Let's see who moves first. Let's see who moves first and right first. Oh, okay. Uh, one guy's already a yard ahead of the other. All right, there's, there's a very clear differentiation between their helmets. All right, one guy's already defeated a block, by the way, and he's going to go make the tackle. Watch this from the tight. Watch number 11. This is very special, man. The, the amount of ground this guy can cover, the amount of instincts, this, that slip right there, 
stop playing with me, all right, and then to close the ground. I will say this. I recognize this from the left guard. This left guard has been telling himself all week, I'm not fast enough. I'm not fast enough. I'm not fast enough. I got to play fast. I got to play fast. I got to play fast. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. go. And then guess what you do the whole time? You end up playing toes over nose or nose over toes the whole game. And we're just, we're just like this the whole day. And we can't do shit because we're just like this the whole day. And, and, And when we're like that, huh? When we're like that, okay, we're going to get playing. Uh, we're going to get played, I should say. This is a, an exact example of what I was doing right there. Got to play with a big chest. Big chest, big eyes, big forehead. Big chest, big eyes, big forehead. Hit me at a hard stop hour, okay? All right, really, really nerdy. Really, really nerdy observation from me, all right? But you want to talk about fundamentally sound defense, okay? Fundamentally sound defense, all right? We've got, we've got a guy for dive pitch, okay? We got a guy for dive pitch, and we also have a guy for play action arrow, okay? And why does this matter this week? Well, it matters this week more than ever. If we aren't fundamentally sound off play action looks in the flat, you're going to get drilled by them by Georgia, okay? Tight end arrow off play action is like, a guaranteed staple. You're going to see it every single time you play Georgia. You're going to see a tight end getting leaked into the flat off of a play action look. A tight end leaked into the flat off the tight end or off the play action look. Oh, here's Dominic Lovett doing the same thing. You're going to get arrows into the flat. So as a defense, though Wisconsin's not actually running it right here or running this play right here, as a defense, I need to know and I need to see on tape that you're fundamentally building in things to stop all things, right? That makes sense? So I see a good fundamentally sound, and not just the player being fundamentally sound, but the the mechanics of the defense. Hey, they do this, we do this, right? We automatically have something built in for that. Just shows me you're well well designed more than anything. You're well coached and well designed. Hey, they're still relatively new in their system, okay? They're still relatively new in their system. You're going to see right here, Malachi Moore is absolutely irate with Jihad Campbell right now for some reason. The two are talking pre-snap, all right? And we give up an explosive in the run game because number 11 and number 13 are talking as the play is being snapped, okay? So here's what I would suggest. Seeing stuff like this on tape, buddy, we'd be right on the ball right now. We wouldn't be waiting for nothing, Okay, as soon as we had a big play, we'd be right on the ball. As soon as we get a first down, we're right on the ball. All right, and we're calling a play in Carson's headset that we know is pretty base in stock, okay? Because all we're trying to do is create some type of confusion. Because I'm going to be honest, this is the first positive play, like north of six, seven yards that we've seen in this game, and it's only because of cre- uh, confusion created uh, on the defensive side of the football. Okay, Jahad Campbell's two gaps over by the time the ball is snapped. Okay, he's two gaps over. He should be right here. Instead, he's over here. All right, so yeah, this play hits big because by the time the center gets up to the second level, he ain't got nobody to go to except the damn safety. Malachi Moore does not take no shit, by the way. I don't know if anybody expected him to. Uh, flash play number eight. Watch this is, this is the definition of a flash play, Jonathan. Watch him fly into your screen. Bam. I like me some Devonta Smith. Are you a Devonte or a Devonta guy? Smith. You're a Devonta. I think so. I'm a Devonte. Devonte Smith. Devonte Smith. Honestly, I wouldn't be Devonte Smith. Both. Yeah. You a Brent Venables or a Brett Venables guy? Depends on the day. Yeah. yeah. All right. This is where I started getting a little ticked off. Okay. Coach, I, I, I love that we're trying here. I love that we're trying here. Um, oh, no, 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 I mixed, I, I completely marked out this analysis. All right, so we're motioning away. We're pulling this safety. That safety's rolling down. We obviously have cover one. Man, I wanted a slant so damn bad right here from this coordinator. I did. I wanted a slant so bad because this quarterback's really struggling, right? It's the first time in, he, and he didn't expect to play. Tyler Van Dyke. So what are we going to do, Coach? We're we throwing 12 back down to 10. Big boy comeback. Far sideline, outside the numbers. Buddy, 
chooch the thing. Just absolutely let it rip. All right, so we're going we're to call that. That's what I'm thinking first because I'm, I'm watching the young quarterback, and he immediately clicks down onto the bottom. He's like waiting for this comeback to open, and it's just now getting open. And guess what? He'd been sacked five seconds ago, so it don't even matter. But here's the deal. Um, Co Coach was trying. Coach was trying the bender on the backside. The bender's wide open, and it's there, and it would be there. The quarterback just clicks right the hell off of it immediately. That's running the grass right now. It's running the grass right now. All right, and he's got time. He's already down to the bottom. Watch how fast he clicks through these reads when we get to the tight. This is what it looks like when, you're co when your coordinator's saying, ooh, my quarterback sped up. My quarterback's reads are sped up. Watch how quickly he comes off this bender on the backside. Oh, he didn't even try. He didn't even try. Now we're just going to stare at the comeback, and here comes the bender right here. Bender's wide ass. Wide ass open. Boom! And has no spatial awareness from the backside defensive end. Hey, great job bending the hoop right here, 22. Great job bending the hoop right here. From this point to get back vertical, all right, is really, really hard, especially when big offensive linemen are pushing our hips, okay? Great job right there by Deuces. I think here in a second we get a, uh, a look at their, their elite, elite pass rushing group. Assuming there's a bust right here by uh, Wisconsin. I'm going to tell you right now, when we look at this from the tight, these two human beings are going to look like they're the same exact person. You know what I mean? We're going to be staring at this read, and both these guys are going to be right in line with one another, and that's bad, bad offense. Bad, bad offense. So I'm thinking we had a two-way release right here from the running back, and he probably should have been working to the flat, maybe. That's my initial thought when we watch this play. Nonetheless, dead snap. Quarterback has to get rid of it. All right, and let's look at the actual rush. I love this kind of mindset and game plan here from, uh, from Alabama. We're going to show this rover look again, almost like he's a spy, but he's not. All we're trying to do is set up a delay speed rush on the outside to get him a free a free run. Look, boom. All right, because we know if I if I take this defensive end and I influence this tackle down inside, these tackles chase cheese, man. These offensive linemen chase you. Oh, I'm getting beat inside. Oh, and they, they run inside. All right, and now whoop. Now he's like, oh, I got to run back out. Now he's screwed. Don't chase the cheese, boys. Don't chase the cheese. By the way, I have yet to see this dude do this. I have, I have yet to see it. Every single time he's over there, they're slanting, stunting, rapping, doing something. They, I, I wouldn't want him to attack an A-gap. I want him blitzing edges and rushing and bending and, and sprinting. I don't want him trying to get swallowed by a six foot five, 330 330-pounder. That's not the goal. The goal is to create havoc. So wherever he's lined up, I would assume he's not coming there. You know what I mean? D-tackles got really, really, really long limbs, man. Really, really long limbs, except for Keenan. He's a sawed-off shotgun. Hey, coach, call this play just on second and 15 next time, okay? It's third and 15 now, and that's great. That's great. We motioned to empty, and we got our, our quarterback a nice, easy reception at the sticks. Awesome. Call it on second and 15 because you pick up 12 yards here. But you're punting anyways because now it's fourth down. Once we're already behind the sticks, we probably need to go ahead and call this one, right? I'm going to be honest with you. I think that's cover three. I think. I don't. This is one of the more. And I think, I think Womack talked about this, Jonathan, when he first got hired. He is a mixed coverage coach, meaning we're going to put a line down the middle of the field, and whatever you're presenting over here, we're going to play the best coverage humanly possible. Whatever you're presenting up here, we're going to play the best coverage humanly possible. I, so sitting here going, ooh, that's cover three, or ooh, that's cover six, or ooh, that's cover four, or ooh, that's cover one, man. Some of that stuff's really, really easy on a lot of other football programs. It's not the easiest on this one. Okay, it's not the easiest on this one. Not in my opinion. 
Where are we at? 45. All right. What did I put here? Don't ever tell me this game is soft. Still got to fill a hole. Don't ever tell me this game is soft. You still got to fill holes, dog. You still got to be able to come down, strike, and use your lid. There is no doubt about it. Deontay Lawson, been doing this for a minute. Been doing this for a minute. That's a really good read. That's not a read. That's a plug. He's firing. That's, that's pre-snap, predetermined, short yardage situation. He's ain't no doubt about it. He's flying. Uh, my question is, what in the sh- – All right. First and foremost, let's just talk about this from an offensive standpoint. We're a full out-out. We're a full scoop all the way to Mike 11, which means you guys are all the way – to uh, zero. That should be your free. That should be the the combination blocks. That's what we're working here as an offense. So I I just want to know what in the shit are you two doing? Because you, you take no, no, you show no efforts to ever take this block over and you show no intentions to play front half of the man to get off to the inside linebacker. Watch this. I would, if, if a Georgia offensive lineman did this, I think I would throw the keyboard in this film study. I think I would throw the keyboard in this film study. Because Xavier Trust is going to fall over sometimes. I'm not going to lie to you. But he's going to be in the right spot. He's going to be in the right spot, particularly on third and one. Atrocious. Uh, the notes just say Tank Keenan. Tank Keenan, big number 96. This joker right here. He ain't got no time for that play play. He ain't got no time for that play play. He squatted on both y'all's asses. He folded the right guard and then folded the center right at the line of scrimmage. Bring yo ass on Saturday night 196 in front of you. Bring yo ass. All right, I want to go to this last clip. And this is it for today. This is it for today. Um, Because, again, man, this is is the epitome of this football game, in my opinion. Hey, misalignment. Misalignment going on right now from Alabama. Okay? You are out of uh, assignment. I think you're supposed to be over here at defensive end. But we got you a lick no matter what as an offense because we've got down blocks and we've got counter coming back the other way. So we're going to be one-on-one with the safety. And here's the deal. Counter's in the game plan this week no matter what. Counter, pin and pull, all that good stuff because I think they box up a little bit too much inside and I think they are a little bit I think they are a little bit vulnerable out here in the run game, okay, as are most defenses. However, all right, this was the epitome of this football game for Wisconsin because check me out. I'm, I, on the film right now, I'm thinking, all right, hey, great tackle. Great tackle. A great play, too. We got all the way down the field. We got a 30-yard explosive. Some bitch put the ball on the ground. Put the ball on the ground. He fumbled. Every, every time there was something good happening for Wisconsin in this football game, they were like, nah, we ain't trying to win today. Nah, we ain't trying to win. Y'all can have it. Y'all can have it. We, ain't, we don't want none of this business. So don't do that, and I think you'll be okay. Uh, don't have – Wide receivers falling down on corner routes. Don't have wide receivers quitting on dig routes. Uh, Don't have offensive linemen missing assignments. Don't have quarterbacks just short-arming balls because they're the first time playing. Uh, Don't invest in Tyler Van Dyke. Don't don't do all of these things, okay? You might have a chance. I think Georgia certainly got a chance on Saturday. I'm certainly excited about it. I hope you guys are as well. We'll be back for Alabama Offensive Film Review at some point soon. Make sure you're hitting that thumbs up button and damn sure leaving a comment telling your friends. Appreciate you. Love you. Bye.